In 2023, I tried out a lot of new gear and software. In this video, I want to show you five apps I found this past year that enhanced my life, made me more effective and more creative as a film director and as a content creator on YouTube. At the end of the video, I will mention two more apps I think could be apps that I will use a lot more next year. Number one, Cadrage. They say the ultimate director's viewfinder app. I can say I agree 100%. I use this app every day during the shoot of my last TV movie, in every scene, in every setup. My director of photography, shout out to Rudy, pointed me to Cadrage. It's very easy to set up. You choose the camera you shoot with, you put together the set of lenses you have on board, then you are very fast creating your blocking and finding your shots that best tell the story. Me and Rudy used it during Location Scout and creating our shot list. You can take photos in the app and you get all information you need burned in. You can export and share single photos or even put together and export a whole shot list. On the shot list, among other information, you get a QR code that will point you to the geo information where you shot the picture, which also helps you to plan the logistics of your shoot a little bit better. You can also take a video to test out your shot or your camera movement to present it for previous purposes, for example. At the end of the video, you get all necessary information, including the Geo QR code. And there is a widget available, so you can launch the app directly from your lock screen. Cadrage, an app I will use in all my fiction projects in 2024. Number two. Notion, an overall project organization tool or platform. Why did I not know about Notion until 2023? This completely changed my organization of my work, or let's better say, I'm still reorganizing and putting everything into Notion. It is a web-based platform. So even though there is a separate app or apps for the most common platforms around, you need to be online in order to use it. I started using it when I first started organization of my YouTube channel. I very quickly realized I could expand it to all the fields my company works in. I, for example, used it as well for part of my preparation of my last movie, and I used it as an inventory for all the gear we own. It's simple and complex at the same time. As someone who always wants everything the way I want it, I had to get used a bit to the user interface and the templates they provide. For my movie preparation, I have programmed my own database on FileMaker. FileMaker lets me create my own user interface. But then again, it's very, very complicated and it took me months to implement all that I wanted into my database. I'm not at that point with Notion yet. And I'm sure I only use like 1% of its possibilities. But it has become a very close companion and I'm sure I will work my way even deeper into it and use it for much more than I use it now. The best about Notion is that it's free for basic use. I never wanted to do something where I needed to pay. Okay, I don't use the AI functions and I don't upload files larger than 5 megabytes. Plans then would start at $8 per month if you pay annually or $10 paid monthly. Number three, the Blackmagic camera app for iPhone. What a game changer. Your iPhone turns into a Blackmagic camera. The user interface looks almost exactly the same. Some of the great features are manual shutter settings in speed or angle, manual ISO settings, several manual settings for audio, the possibility of grids and scales, the possibility of adding custom LUTs, the possibility of recording Apple Log in different ProRes qualities and even HEVC or H.264. With the Blackmagic camera app and yes, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, my iPhone is a really good alternative backup camera if I need something light and easy to handle. The files the app provides are amazing. I had a fantastic time grading them. I did a video about Apple Log where you can see the results and I go deeper into the app. I linked the video on the end of this video. The Blackmagic camera app is definitely an app I will use a lot in 2024. By the way, if you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter X and TikTok. I'll always post additional content to my YouTube videos there. Number four, Plotter, a software for screen and novel writing. They say outline faster, organize smarter, turbocharge your productivity with the number one visual book planning and story bible software. And I can say yes, it's true. 
I am a film director first and foremost, but I have my own stories I want to tell and I need to write them down. And I always struggle with where to start. A friend of mine, shout out to Mark, pointed me to Plotter. With Plotter, you can visualize your plot points or better your story structure. It's the old index card system, but this time it's digital. And for me, it's easier this way because I write faster on a keyboard than by hand and I can take it with me wherever I go. The cool thing about Plotter is that you have this matrix where you can see it horizontally or vertically and you can uh, arrange it whatever way you want. You can have different timelines for characters or for your overall structure. Past year, I was able to outline a feature and I was able to structure the first season of a series for a pitch deck I presented. This method made me much faster and I feel my outlines got easier to read for others. I'm a very convinced user of Plotter and I'm sure I will use it a lot in 2024 as I have some stories and screenplay ideas twirling in my head. Number 5. Letterboxd. They call it a social network for film lovers. I call it the platform for film nerds. It's IMDb meets social media. You can track the films you have watched, save those you want to see and tell your friends what is good and what they can skip. As a total statistics maniac, I love that I am able to have a diary with all the stuff I watch and get statistics about everything. The picture editor of my last film, shout out to Johannes, showed me the platform. I spent a few days filling up my diary with not all, but I hope most of the films I have seen since around 1980. I now have some 1800 films in my diary. I was able to rate them and where I remembered, I tagged the movie theater where I saw the film. If you want to start now and are crazy like me, I highly recommend the data import feature. You can download a CSV sample list and then fill in the information in Excel or Pages or some other spreadsheet application and then re-import the list into Letterboxd. This way you're much faster in updating your back catalog. There is also a dedicated iOS app. So, after watching this video, head over to Letterboxd and create an account. There is a basic free account. Find me on the Froschmeier and follow me there. I'm happy to go into conversations about different films and our film tastes. There are some other filmmakers on Letterboxd you can follow, a certain Martin Scorsese, for example. Letterboxd, the app, the platform, I'm sure I will spend a lot of time with Letterboxd in 2024, especially because I'm planning on working a bit on getting through my watch list. Two more things. I have two more apps I want to mention. I recently gave GoodNote 6 another chance. I tried it in the past and as I mentioned earlier, I'm not that fast with writing by hand. But I like the new organization and all the new features since I last checked it. With around $10 a year, I decided to give it another try. And last but not least, the brand new Apple Journal app. I think this is really cool. It's my own private board where I can post whatever I like and no one will ever see it. But I still get to post it, so I get it out of my system. These are my 5 plus 2 app recommendations. If you want other recommendations, for example how to best shoot pictures of a city skyline at night, check out this video. Or check out this video for some Leica content. Stay curious!